friends, Miss Shelby here. I have a special story to share with you today. This is one of my favorite stories from when I was a little kid. You might know about this character. He was in a movie a couple of years ago that you might have seen. Hmm. His name is Peter Rabbit, and today we're going to read The Tale of Peter Rabbit, written by Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter has written lots of stories about lots of characters, ooh, like Jemima Puddle Duck and Tom Kitten and Benjamin Bunny. Have you heard any of those stories before? Today we're gonna read about Peter Rabbit and all the trouble that he gets into. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Uh-oh, friends. Hmm. Let's see. Let's put on our thinking caps. Where do you think Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter are going to go? Do you have a prediction? Okay, hold on to it. Let's see. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Okay. Mrs. Rabbit is leaving. What are the little rabbits going to do? Oh, then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. Yum! I love blackberries. Have you ever had a blackberry before? Hmm, did you like it? But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. There he is. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans. Then he ate some radishes. Mm -hmm, those sound super yummy to me. Do you like eating those vegetables? What kind of vegetables do you like to eat? And then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Oh, look at Peter. He has his hands on his tummy. That's a clue that tells us that he is not feeling very well. I wonder what he'll do. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet? But, who do you think it is? <gasps> Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten his way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. Ooh. Look really closely to this picture. Can you see his tiny little rabbit shoes? After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. I wonder how Peter is gonna get out of that net. 
What do you think? Can you think of a solution? Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Oh, so the sparrows are trying to be good friends, I think. They're tr encouraging him to keep going and to not give up. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Oh, so that was the solution that Peter found. He left his jacket behind. <sighs> so now Peter has lost his shoes, <gasps> his new jacket. I wonder what will happen next to him. Oh, he rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. So Peter doesn't have his shoes, he doesn't have his jacket, and now he's wet. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden under a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Ah, Mr. McGregor was after him again. and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Has Peter escaped? Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about going lippity, lippity, not very fast and looking all around. Friends, have you ever been lost? How did that feel? Hmm. How did you solve that problem? Did you have help? I wonder if Peter has anyone who will help him. Let's see. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still. But now and then, the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it was best to go away without speaking to her. She, he had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. Here's a cat. I have a cat that looks quite like this cat. His name is Jack and he is all white, just like the cat in the story. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard an, the, no, the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Hmm. So friends, it seems like Peter knows where to go, but Mr. McGregor is in the way. How 
hell is Peter going to get past Mr. McGregor? Do you have any ideas? Let's find out. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. There Peter goes, he made it out. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Friends, it sounds like our friend Peter Rabbit gets in quite a lot of trouble. Hmm. Do you think he's learned his lesson? <sighs> I am very sorry to say that Peter was not very well, well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter, one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. Wow, friends. I noticed that there were a lot of really yummy foods in this book. There were blackberries and peas and radishes and lettuce and onions. So many yummy things. So friends, come back and see me later and we will play a game with some of these delicious foods. It was so fun reading with you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.